You're watching KLTX, Channel 15, serving the city of Lufkin. In our TV talk segment today, we are talking about Frumius Bandersnatches. Actually, they're not Frumius. I think it comes from the same poem, but Bandersnatch, movie on Netflix related to Black Mirror, which I have not seen any of, so I had no idea what I was getting into. I, I'm, it's on my list. I'm gonna watch it. Been planning to, just hadn't had time. I know. I know. <laughs> so, so before we get started, did we all watch the same movie? I don't think so. I don't so. know. <laughs> we'll find out. That was one of the things I wanted to find out. So this is an interactive movie that Netflix did. Yes, yes, it would not let me watch it on my TV. I had to go to my computer with the mouse. Really? I to we did it on the Roku. My yeah, TV's not smart enough, apparently. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, so it's a choose-your-own-adventure story yeah, in movie form. In a movie. And so as the movie plays out, these little boxes pop up at the bottom, at least for me, they were on the bottom, a little yeah. black box, and there's, there's no break in the movie. Mm -mm. It's just kind of, as the movie is going, this box comes up, and there's two options. And you have to pick one or the other, you click on it, and the movie goes down that path. There's the thing that was impressive technologically to me was they managed to edit the movie and then stitch it together so that when you made a choice, there was no jump. It wasn't seamless. Yeah, it was a seamless, seamless. integration of that choice. And some of the choices were benign, or at least seemed benign. Like which cereal do you want? And the dad would ask the kid what cereal do you want, and the screen pops up and it has the two options. You pick the one you want, and he hands him that yeah, that and box, it's, and it's and meanwhile it's cutting back and forth between them, and the, right, you see so the kid thinking, and the dad's like, well, you know, you could go this way, or you could go this way. It doesn't really matter, and you're supposed to. You've got a little timer too, which is very stressful. Yeah, you've got like ten seconds to, to make <laughs> your choice. And then some of them were, and they took you down the path, right? Yeah. Some of them were very important choices to the story, yeah. and some of them were not. And supposedly, to pay depending on what choices you picked, you get different movies or different outcomes. Now the thing that I have a question and I really want to see is will I what kind of if we all got the same ending? Yeah. Because and I don't think we could do it here because we would we would spoil it. Eh, I yeah. say we go, go for it because like I say it's interactive. You may end so up with a different ending. You may. The thing I wondered about and was concerned about was as I made choices, as you make the wrong choices, I guess, it would loop back. It would literally Sometimes, like rewind yeah. and it would go, okay, you start over here and do it again. <laughs> and But it would it would come to that choice and then it would either only have one choice or it would have the same two choices or a couple of times I got new choices. So to me, it's like, okay, how much choice do we actually have? Like if I pick the wrong path, does it just circle back around and go down the path it wants to go down anyways? But I have heard of other endings, right. sort of other endings. So I know. I was wondering some... whether the creators were doing a tongue-in-cheek thing. There is like because I'm controlling how the story goes, but am I really? Because if I make the wrong choice, I end up having to go back and essentially yeah it's... make a different choice. So like, am I really in control? Who's in control here? So I, I thought that was <laughs> that was important to to get out of the way. At yeah. first, this is an interactive movie, so I'm going to give kind of a synopsis and y'all yeah. can the gist the gist. <laughs> And so uh, there's the story of Stefan, who is and is set in Britain in mm -hmm. the 1980s again, I believe. Yeah. And he is a computer programmer. He's probably late teens, early 20s. Yeah, aspiring video game programmer. Yeah. And he's living well, in... Well, I got Stephen from Australia, who was a welder. Yeah. What? <laughs> Did you really? No. <laughs> so so uh, Stefan is living at home with his dad, and he wants to be a video game designer. And he takes this game, Bandersnatch, that he has created to a, a studio... And they like it, and he wants to make it. And it's basically just a story of him going into madness. Yeah. He, he kind of goes crazy. But as you're interacting with the movie, you're sending him down different paths. Mm -hmm. And his thing is he keeps feeling like someone's guiding him, something, somebody <laughs> is directing him. So I think this is where the brilliance of this movie was. is because I know he's going insane, and I know he has no free will mm -hmm. because I'm picking the direction right. he goes. 
but he is he thinks that's there and as he kind of goes deeper into this madness and someone is controlling me but because it was interactive and i was actually doing that at some point in the movie you're like it really made me feel like i was participating right in the movie mm -hmm. not just picking a button at random not just whatever like I, I had consequences to my actions and I was actually doing it. I thought they did a great job of, of interweaving that. Now the story itself was interesting and good in that kind of trippy out there type way. At some point he takes acid, or at least he did in mine, and it got real kind of trippy you and You told weird. him to take acid? Why not? Yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> I told him not to and he still took it. What? So see there, the thought, I wonder about the- Yeah, how much choice how do much you free actually will have? you really have in it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it got, it got really trippy and, and there was kind of, is this person dead or are they not really dead? I don't and then know. it rewinds time, but when it rewinds, so say you make a choice and that, and I don't know if you would call it wrong or a false choice, it goes back and starts over, but it doesn't start over. Like you don't have to watch the no, movie. No, it speeds again. through. Yeah, it speeds yeah. through and gives you kind of like a montage and highlights, but it has your options in there. And then some things it stops and it plays and they're slightly different. Yeah. And it's kind of weird because it's like those have already happened, but you went back in time. So then people die, but then you make a mistake and you go back in time and you're like, well, but did, is the person really dead? Because we went back in time. Well, what it's doing is a couple of characters seem to have like this omniscience about things and they know that it's your second time but then also what they're doing is they're highlighting clues on what decision you should make for the for the foreshadowing to oh, the decision i was so oblivious to everything they tried to guide me to <laughs> it was bad uh there was there was a couple of them I, I picked up on and i was happy now i thought the story was really good mm. I thought the interactivity was really cool. You didn't like the story at all? We'll get to that. Later. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought the interactivity was really cool, and it kind of, again, makes me excited for what could be. Right. Like, what else could they do with this, like, interactive movie thing? And so that part, to me, was enjoyable. I have never in my life liked a choose-your-own-adventure story. Not, not the books. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a, like, completionist. If I play a video game, I'm going to do every side quest first, right. and then I want to 100% mm -hmm. max out every level. And so when you do a choose your own adventure, I, my brain just goes, what did I miss? What got left out? And so the same thing here. And, and I've had people tell me, I used to read those choose your own adventure when we were in junior high. And I had people tell me, well, we just read it again and take a different path. And I'm like, I've already read the book. So I, like, I don't want to read it again, but I don't want to feel like I missed something. Right. And I feel like there's probably things I missed in here that I didn't get to see, or there's different outcomes I would have rather had. Right. And I don't know if I got those out. You know, could I go back and do it? But I don't want to have to go back and watch the movie all the way through again to, right. to do that. So I don't like that aspect of choose your own adventure. And so that that I, I don't like. And secondly, it almost at some point felt like I was taking a test instead of watching <laughs> a movie. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, well, and, it's, and it didn't until I made the, until it did the first rewind. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I picked wrong. Yeah. And it's making me do it again. <laughs> and it's like, well, what if I pick wrong? I don't want to pick wrong again. I don't want to have to do it again. Yeah. I want to pick the right answer. And so that that kind of added this like stress level for, for me doing something. I'm like, oh. And sometimes they were so, there was, to me, there was nothing guiding me or showing me or telling me what's there. Yeah. It's like, oh, which that's a bad example because that wasn't really important. But as far as we know. Later on, yeah. <laughs> and it may have, you know, how did that affect the path? I read some stuff online and saw some stuff like you get to pick sometimes the music and he's like oh what music and you click it and then that becomes like the soundtrack to the, the yeah, movie the you know the yeah and but you get to pick like what Tangerine Dream or the Thompson Twins yeah like, you don't get to pick like music you want to listen to right? <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah that that was kind of if I pick the wrong thing am I not going to get the outcome and sometimes there's not a good choice no, and some of the wrong choices are funny I got a random ninja fight in the middle of the thing <laughs> Yeah. It's like, yeah, ninja fights with batons. Oh, I did too. It was at the end of the thing. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Maybe I picked a different path after that because that was almost dead end of my movie. <laughs> so I'm going to give a, a really positive review, but keep in mind it's completely sarcastic and it's based upon the fictional yeah. Netflix person Sarcasm. that I think they must have asked about this. So you know what I really love in a movie? watching the entire thing and not actually seeing enough of it so that whenever I talk with my friends about it, we're on the same page and know what happened. You know what else I love in a movie? Having to hold my remote in my hand because I never know when I'm going to be asked to do a cutscene, but I don't actually want to play a video game. And if I do set my remote down, having to reach for it and throw it halfway across the room. So I thought about 
when I was thinking about what I was going to say for this, I thought of a lot of negative things I could say. Because again, I was the same way. And it's like subconsciously, I held the remote because it tells you in the minute this is an interactive movie, hold the remote. I subconsciously set you the remote it, down. Yeah. And then, and I'm bad about setting it here or here or here. Yeah. And it would pop up and I'm like, oh, a choice. Where's the, <laughs> where's the remote at? And, uh, and I did the fumbly thing and nearly threw it across the room a couple of times. And at some point I had something going and I'm like, let me just jump up for like five seconds and check this. And I jumped up and I was like, oh, what if it pops up a, <laughs> what if it pops yeah. up a choice that I'm not there to make it? And so, and like I said, there was the stress. And so there was a lot of things about it. I was like, mm, mm. but overall as an experience, I, I really thought it was, it was different. It yeah. was something different. And to me, that was good. I really enjoyed that. And I like the kind of crazy he's going insane at like if you have Netflix and you have the ability to do this, I think you're missing out if you don't don't do it once. One neat thing that I am kind of hopefully going to be looking forward to, I am looking forward to it, whether it actually happens, let's see. I watched it by myself. So my wife hasn't seen it. I'm looking forward to letting her watch it and make all the decisions so I can just sit back and watch how it unfolds. Like a personality, yeah. like Myers Briggs test. Hopefully, really <laughs> she'll make different decisions than I did. I'm sure kill him! Kill them all! Hit them with the thing. Yeah. I learned so much about you. Uh, well, so here's. Why? <laughs> this is actually not my argument, but I'm going to make that argument. And it came about in virtual reality. When virtual reality came about, and one of the things I always thought was, man, 3D or uh, VR movies would be awesome because you would get such a big field of view, and you could do all this. Like, man, I can't wait till they start making, you know. VR movies. The thing that got me is they, they interviewed several directors and, and they, they asked me, are you going to make a VR movie? And they all said, no. And they said, why not? And they said, well, as a director, I have a vision and I show you what I want you to see. And in VR, you can look around. I don't want you looking around. I don't want you looking at the scenery. I don't want you looking behind you. Right. I want you to see what I want you to see. That's my art. And I kind of, I thought about that it watching this movie. Because, again, you kind of were stared down a path, but instead of getting someone's vision of, here's this movie, this is the way I want it to end, and, you know, we had talked about things like the Ballad of Buster Scruggs and how they had put, which yeah. sure, they picked the order that came out in on purpose. Well, if you got to pick which one, then you've broken that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that chain. And I wonder, you know, in a movie like this, if I'm picking the direction he takes, then where's the director's... You know, if you were making a, if, if every movie went this way, yeah. it seems like it would be a bad thing because you wouldn't get that. Right. I want you to see this after you see that, and I want you to go down this path, unless it forces you. And once it forces you, then it's not really. So that's thinking. that's where I have some major concerns with this movie. Is that I think there is very clearly a way that the director wanted the movie to go, and it goes from the beginning all the way to the end, and it has the typical Black Mirror hook. Which is not an insult because I love the Black Mirror hooks, but it's got that feeling right there at the end where it finally brings you back into the whole tell on modern technology. Because that's the thing that, that puts all of Black Mirror in the same category of series. And this one doesn't have that unless you go to that particular ending. And then the other endings are um, a Donnie Darko take. <laughs> and there's a lot of story in here that I have a lot of problems with because... I love Philip Dick, and it feels like they kind of made a a bad guy out of Philip Dick. Like they took some of the background of this author who was troubled, who believed he was at the heart of a conspiracy. He had these science, like this science fiction ideals, and his family had some turmoil there, and they turned him into a villain. And I feel like if you know who Philip Dick is and you understand his writing. It, it, even a little bit, you would be kind of offended that they would kind of take a jab at him like that, especially with the government conspiracy and being followed. It is very close to uh, the real life story of Philip Dick, except for he never, you know, was a murderer. I don't know. I just it, I felt like it's probably too too similar to be coincidental, but yeah. maybe it was just a hey, it's a cool idea. Let's use that for a, a story and then twist it. And I'm okay with it. Yeah. And we talk about this a bunch. People tend to, you know, we go see a movie, you go watch, a, you know, there was one year there were like 13 Beowulf movies come out. And none yeah. of them had anything to do with Beowulf. We're no. just using the name. And it's like, if they had called him Philip K. Dick and, and put it in there, then then I would have been like, ooh. 
but because it was a different guy, even though it kind of resembles him, at least they didn't go, yeah, that's him, yeah. and try to make it seem like that was his real real life, because we do that a lot now, and I don't like that when we're like, watch this fantasy that's real life, and it's like, no, it's it's not real life. But then, like, with the scene with the with the acid, and then talking about, you know, what is real life, and, and at the heart of a government conspiracy, and, and was it uh, something in control? Power and control. Power and control. And it's, it's like, have you seen Scanner Darkly? Like, this is, well, he's already hit all of these topics. So let's let's go to spoiler mode now. So if, if you don't want spoilers, stop watching. Or just make different choices. <laughs> Take a different. So let's talk about some of the stuff that happened. Let's talk about some of the choices we made and what happened. I tried as hard as I could not to kill anybody. <laughs> well, I, I did it, it first, <laughs> and it wouldn't let me. Like yeah. they, they kept wanting me to kill the dad and kill the dad and kill it. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. And then it's like, you want to stab him in the neck or smash him over the head. And those were my only two options. And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I guess we'll kill the dad. I uh. gave up on this movie whenever it said my two choices were to bury the body or chop it up. <laughs> and I was like, um, that's not a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't get that choice at all. He buried the body, but I never got the option to oh, choose. Oh yeah, he buried the body. So I guess we all got very similar endings there, huh? Well, that was not... So, my ending, uh, and I can't remember now because I can't remember anything, but I, I chose the wrong ending, and I didn't realize it was the ending, and it came back around, and uh, oh, I, when I went into the room, the dad's room, I chose PAC. I typed in PAC. I never did. I always picked the wrong thing for that. So, what did PAC give you? So, PAC... Uh, gave me the wrong... He opened the, the, the toy. It was not in there. Instead, there was a file saying... Um, that he was a test subject and that the dad was watching him and I got all this like he's in a movie studio and the cameras are on the outside and it followed him uh, all the way to the end and I got the ninja fight. Okay, no, I did get that when they forced me to it. Like that was my last Yeah, and I got the ninja fight (laughs) and dad comes in and I got the option to karate chop him or kick him in the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, anyway, his dad ends up like subduing him and he drags him outside and then it rewinds. Mm. And I went, but in in most of it, it rewinds like five minutes. It rewound like twenty minutes, yeah. and it went back to the scene where uh, he got to type it in, and it I typed in toy, yeah. and he got the bunny, and and it went through all the stuff, and at the end, I got the option to get on the train or not, and I chose to get on the train, and I think that was the was that the Donnie Darko yeah. ending you were talking about. I so, chose to not get on the train, and then it made me go back again. And I'm like, ah. Did you see the one where if you try to run from the fight? And then he's just like banging at the window, and they're like, "Yeah, to hey, out the window." He, you know, you're uh, you're filming a TV show. No, I didn't get that. <laughs> and, yeah, and he's like, "I'm, I'm doing what?" <laughs> well, because no, I, and so yeah, in the end, he went back out on the train. My mom died, and he died in current times, and that was the end of the movie. Ooh. And uh, you didn't get that. No. Well, yeah. he's talking to the psychiatrist, right? Yeah. And they get up, and they have the uh, or they would have the fight. Instead, he flashes back to. The, the the bear or the the bunny and he gets the bunny and it gives you the option to go on the train and I chose to get on the train it has a whole thing with him getting on the train with the mom yeah. and he looks very crestfallen like he knows what's going to happen and the train takes off and then it just cuts back to him sitting in the uh, in the like therapy room with the psychiatrist and he's hmm. like hunched over and dead in the chair and she's like I don't know what happened I was just talking and he just fell over dead and huh. that's how it okay, so for the sequence. For the sequence of events that you got in order to get that ending, the reason I was saying Donnie Darko ending is because he has to stand in front of the mirror, have the realization that mirrors travel through time. He climbs through the mirror, which is just like when the your essence comes out of your chest, and then he goes to the bunny, which is just like the Donnie Darko bunny, except it doesn't look terrifying. Mm-hmm. And then he, I didn't ends, think about that. yeah. So it's like those three things linked together in a chain. I was like, okay, I see what they're doing here. I did not put that together at all. I didn't. I haven't seen Donnie Darko, so I will. Oh yeah, you need to watch that. I need to. Uh, no, my my ending was because it kept looping me back to kill the dad. So I'm like, ah, fine, smash him upside the head. So he hit him with like a ash or something and killed him, buried him in the backyard, and then called the therapist, got her like receptionist, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm coming for you next." And then it rolled credits on that. I'm like, "Oh, that's dark." <laughs> but see, mine did that and it kept going. Yeah, mine was. I guess it decided you have watched long enough. You're done. I wonder because no, I did. I did the whole thing, and he's like, "I'm coming for you," blah blah. And I think my fight scene with there was after, like the karate scene was after that. No, mine was before that. 
<laughs> and then my ending was it was one ending where it um, they find the body and then the move the game ends up never coming out and the whole company goes under and then I re- and then it caused me to loop back and then I chose to I think dismember the body and whenever I, I didn't did, give me that up. whenever I did that <laughs> I didn't have the, I the, have the body enough. stayed hidden long enough that the movie the game comes out it's a huge success then they find the they find the body and they pull all the copies of it off the shelf and then the daughter of the main Ritman mm-hmm. uh, the, his daughter finds an old copy and she tries to remake it with better graphics and then she ends up getting caught in the same thing <laughs> where she can't make any decisions and that's where the whole thing I was saying was like I think that's the official ending because it takes that's you back to a modern Mirror technology thing. thing. Yeah. See, I didn't even get that. So, at so all. did you get the thing where the computer kind of talks to him and yeah. he asks, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really funny. <laughs> because it, I forget what the other option was. Oh, it was the symbol. The, I like, chose the symbol, yeah. then I chose pack, and then I chose Netflix. I chose Netflix because it was funny. <laughs> I love the option, like, just stop trying. Yeah. <laughs> stop trying to explain. <laughs> Would you like to go see the therapist? Yes, please. Yes, <laughs> Did y'all see the the demon monster? Whenever you put in Pax P A X, no. I oh, that. it it was pretty scary. Well, no, no, no. I did. I saw the demon monster when he took the acid. Okay. He came after oh, him when yeah, he took the acid, yeah. but I didn't see him. I, I think he comes back again, and he just kind of comes out of nowhere. Huh. <laughs> Because I was expecting the safe to open, and instead, like he like turns around and stop. Ah. No, because I got the option was pack, P A C, and toy. Mm-hmm. I chose pack, and it went back, and it had packs. I remember and seeing toy, and I swell. but I never, I didn't pick it. I picked the other one. And, and I said, well, maybe it wants me to pick toy because it was there twice. So I picked, That's what I thought. Yeah. And got, I don't know. Did I'm, anyone get the code right whenever you called no. the therapist? I did. Oh yes. What happens? There was a phone number. It Nothing. was the. Uh, unless I got it wrong. It was like 205 something. 20541. I don't know. They gave me a bunch of flashbacks that really helped because I never would have figured that out. But <laughs> I, that was nice. I tried to put it in and I ended up typing in the wrong numbers. Oh, no. And so it, it was just like, oh, there's no answer. No, that's when he calls the secretary and he's like, I, yeah, yeah the secretary I answers. He's like, I need to talk to her. She tells him, oh, she's on vacation today. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, I just killed my dad and you're next or yeah. something like that. And I'm coming. That's for what it. happens. What? Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah. Sounds very similar to a lot of the old Sega CD games where you yeah. had to choose and they had pre recorded videos on it. Mm. Played one with Corey Haim that was pretty cool. I, again, I think it's totally worth a watch. Who knows what experience you're going to get. Yeah. Um, somebody actually printed a list of like the options and you can see like to get, the, out, to get the outcome you have, which I think, like you said, is the official ending. They put like, so apparently there's a whole Easter egg and a whole bunch of other stuff, and you yeah. can go online and do a bunch of stuff, but you have to put in a specific, like, you have to pick the right cereal, right you have to pick the right song. Right. You have to, yeah. Oh, and, and then it, you have to analyze a, a white noise sound yeah, and turn it, it you, into something. And it's like, no one's going to do that. They're just going to look up the cheats online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do that one. Sure. Grease Marines. If we can make it work. There it goes. This movie is about those kids that go to the witch's house. Her and her brother Hansel? Yes. Where's this? I have a bag that I found that I think belongs to Greta Hedag. Oh, bless your heart. Where did you find it? On the subway. Oh, would you like a cup of coffee? You've been so kind. I don't get many visitors here. I've been so lonely since my daughter left. Well, I could help you. My mom actually used to say, uh, I'm like chewing gum. I tend to stick around. (laughs) Oh no, it looks touchy-feely. I'm expecting a dark turn at any point. There's your music. So here we go. We might be in business. Ooh, Persis. Did you find them? Yay, she's crazy. Two flying bags around the city. I was hoping someone brings them back to her. And you did. Oh my god, it's her. Just let it ring. I saw the bags, Greta. And I never want to see you again. She's really freaking me out. This is not a problem. Public area, her rights are protected. Why are you doing this? How exciting. 
I am Frances, and I'll be your waitress for the evening. No, I can't do this. Are you a child? No, you're the child. You need a mother to hold you. Don't you dare talk to me about my mother. She had to die for us to meet. Are you out of your mind? Look at her. She's full of greeting. She's gone. <laughs> Everyone needs a friend. Between more than friends, we're connected. There's something you need to know about Greta. <laughs> 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 you insane? What did you do? Just try to get rid of Greta. So turns out to be a dark like dark psychological thriller. Those can either go one or two ways. <laughs> well, let me say that I'm not one to pass up a feel-good film like this. Yeah, yeah I think I need to. It, it, these are such hit-and-miss movies, though, you know, because sometimes if it's done well, it's just brilliant and mind-bending and it's great, and then if it's done poorly, it's then just we're watching Teaches Mrs. Tingle again. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. How <laughs> do you like Chloe Grace Moretz? Well, and I didn't know, it's kind of weird. It started off all happy, but you're right. The music started to, to darken, and then down we went. So uh, that's one that's going to have to be, like, time will tell. That that could be one of those great movies we've been been waiting for. So I'm, I'm in, definitely willing to give it a shot. It looked like fun to me. I'll give it a go. 